Here's your wrestling news for October 20th, 2020. And your headlines for today include Mustafa Ali reveals himself as SmackDown mystery hacker during WWE Raw. Major mistake made with retribution. Kyrie Sane spotted at non WWE event. Otis shows up on WWE Raw under mask as El Gran Gordo. Elias explains about his Royal Rumble altercation with Brock Lesnar. What really went wrong? Who is AJ Styles' new bodyguard Jordan Omogbian on WWE Raw? Jake Hager set for next Bellator fight. Major achievement for Paige. Why Sasha Banks was cussed at during WWE event and more. We are kicking off with Raw news as after Retribution suffered a beatdown thanks to Bray Wyatt, Mustafa Ali had a secret to share. Appearing backstage with his group, Ali spoke about needing just the click of a button to cause chaos. And after speaking about how he watched the superstars from his home during the summer, revealed himself as the SmackDown mystery hacker. It's been previously reported that WWE had no plans for this angle until very recently, when it was decided to be wrapped into the retribution angle. And it's good to see WWE tie up loose ends during Raw's season premiere. The best part about Retribution this week is that the promo from Ali was pouring with genuine emotion, but it seems odd that the group would have such a pivotal moment before going on to lose to the Hurt Business and then being destroyed with relative ease by The Fiend. After all, Retribution are meant to be a group to be feared, but ever since they revealed their names and masks, the group have done very little to actually scare the fans, especially as they've been missing from pay-per-views, including SummerSlam, Payback, and most recently, Clash of Champions. Not only is this group of anarchists losing momentum through a mix of not showing up and getting easily beaten when they do, but we also can't help but question whether the ever-popular Fiend needed to get involved with them. Even if it's a demonic force like the Fiend, under no circumstances is it okay for an entire group to be demolished by one person, especially a group that WWE are meant to be pushing hard given that there are rumors of Retribution getting a major main event match at next month's Survivor Series. Seeing Wyatt demolish Retribution, we got flashbacks of John Cena demolishing the Nexus during the Raws of 2010, and the WWE should seriously avoid repeating that, as the Nexus were never quite as intimidating or impressive after coming up short against Big Match John. But what do you think? What do you believe Ali should do to take the fight to the Hurt Business, The Fiend, and Alexa Bliss? Leave your views in the comments below. Speaking of people in WWE, Kairi Sane is still in the company, now serving as an ambassador in her homeland of Japan, but that hasn't stopped her from venturing into other promotions. This week, Sayuri Kondo tweeted a photo of himself with the former women's tag team champion, revealing that Sane stopped by Stardom's Yokohama Budokan Cinderella Tournament Show. In a tweet translated from Japanese, Kondo spoke about how great it was to see Sane again, whilst the Kabuki Warrior, a former World of Stardom champion in her own right, replied by praising Shuri's passion in wrestling, adding that she's looking forward to seeing her again. We'll have to see what Sane does as the WWE's official ambassador in Japan, but for now she's getting out there and seeing some old friends in the meantime. Now this year's WWE draft saw the split of tag teams like the New Day and Heavy Machinery, but now the latter group have found a loophole to keep working together. With Tucker all alone on Raw, he was challenged by The Miz and John Morrison this week to find a partner for a tag team match, and after claiming to have searched all over the globe, produced El Gran Gordo, which was clearly Otis in a pink mask, cape, and trunks. The Miz quickly called Otis out, and the fact that Mr. Money in the Bank was carrying his briefcase lunchbox probably didn't help his subterfuge, and once again, Miz vowed to separate Otis from the contract. Tucker and Otis proved they still have that chemistry in their team, and we'll have to see if fans see more of El Gran Gordo in the coming weeks. With a pink mask and pink cape, this was a far different look for Otis to rock, but a look many fans have seen before. Online, fans pointed out the similarities between El Gran Gordo and La Luchadora, a Mexican-themed character which was used to introduce Mickey James back to the main roster in 2017. The ensemble wasn't quite complete, as the pink trunk Sotis wore didn't come from La Luchadora, and he also didn't use her blue bodysuit, but the rest was a perfect match. With Otis still being contracted to SmackDown, it's likely that El Gran Gordo could become a recurring character on Raw 
especially as Otis's feud with The Miz and Morrison over his Money in the Bank contract shows no signs of slowing down. More from Raw as this week's show saw AJ Styles show up in the Thunderdome with a brand new bodyguard. Fans may recognize Jordan Omogbian as Shane McMahon's bouncer for Raw Underground, but now that that's cancelled, he's found himself a new role. A Nigerian basketball player turned wrestler, Omogbian was a college player at the University of South Florida as well as Morgan State University. The giant of a man came into WWE's Performance Center in the same class as Mia Yim, Matt Riddle, and Damian Priest, but was largely kept off NXT TV, though did serve as the very tall ninja in Akira Tozawa's army. We'll have to see if Styles and Jordan become this generation's Shawn Michaels and Diesel, and it'll be interesting to see what the big man does in his new weekly role on Raw. We're looking back at January 2020, which feels like an entirely different lifetime right now, but that's when WWE offered us one of the best, most entertaining Royal Rumble matches in history, which saw Brock Lesnar as the first entrant. Lesnar's first of 13 victims that night was Elias, and as expected, WWE booked a musical performance by the former 24-7 champion before being attacked and eliminated by the Beast. Speaking to Sports Kita recently, Elias said his spot with Lesnar didn't go quite according to plan, as he had more to sing before Lesnar ambushed him. With that in mind, Elias teased a rematch against the former WWE and Universal Champion, adding, He just decided to run down the ramp at one point. He tried to come after me and try and take me out. Fortunately, I ducked out of the way as this man, you can imagine, 300 plus pounds, incredible athlete, running full speed at me, trying to take my head off. I got in the ring. I mean, I'm not the one to make excuses, but here I am. I've got a guitar around me. I'm also ducked to my microphone and the electrical equipment in my back pocket, and all of a sudden, I find myself in the middle of a fight with Brock Lesnar. He definitely got the better of me, but I'll tell you what, the next time, I imagine there will be at some point down the line, I will be a lot more prepared for how to deal with Brock Lesnar. Lesnar isn't the only former world champion on Elias' list, as fans will remember his run-in with John Cena at WrestleMania 34, ahead of Cena's match with The Undertaker, and his WrestleMania 35 verbal smackdown by the Doctor of Thugonomics. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, Elias spoke about how there was meant to be a third act to this story this year, saying, New Orleans, I'm in the mix with John and The Undertaker. The next year, I'm in there with John and The Undertaker again. John at WrestleMania, The Undertaker the next night on Raw. The year after was supposed to be myself against John Cena at WrestleMania in a three-year running story. Things obviously changed and that didn't end up happening. Instead, Cena faced Bray Wyatt inside the Firefly Funhouse and Elias isn't stopping there as he had another former world champion in his sights. Backstage on this week's Raw, Elias challenged Jeff Hardy to a singles match at Hell in a Cell. And during Raw Talk, the charismatic Enigma accepted the challenge. We'll have to see what these two do this Sunday, but it looks like Hardy is just the first name on a list of stars Elias wants to beat. Now, we previously reported that Lillian Garcia had a big announcement to make this week, and whilst fans expected her to return to the company as a ring announcer, that's only half the story. On Twitter, Lillian confirmed that she is returning to WWE, but not as an announcer, but that her Chasing Glory podcast will be coming to the WWE Network. Though Lillian left the WWE four years ago, she never left the wrestling world, as her podcast has had plenty of superstars appear, and we imagine it'll be even easier to book superstars now that it's on the network. Fans won't have to wait long, as the first episode on the network will air Monday, October 26th, and we're interested to see who she'll have appearing on the show. Over to MMA now, as Jake Hager is undefeated in the Octagon, and he now has another chance to test that record. MMA Kings is reporting that Hager has inked a deal to fight at Bellator 250 on October 29th, and this will see him face the also undefeated Brandon Colton. In AEW, Hager and Chris Jericho have been teaming lately, and we'll have to see how physical he is in the ring, especially as he doesn't have long before the Kelton fight. Fans can expect AEW to reference Hager's return to Bellator in an upcoming edition of Dynamite, and time will tell whether Hager goes 3-0 next week. Now, we previously reported that Vice's dark side of the ring was expected to come back, but now that has been made official. 
The Wrap reports that the show is returning for its third season, which makes sense given that Dark Side of the Ring has been Vice's highest rated show. Comprising of 14 episodes, this is far longer than Season 1's 6 episodes, as well as Season 2's 10. The Wrap didn't confirm what the show topics will be, but with rumors of a Jake Roberts episode and a Brian Pillman episode planned, fans can expect a thorough look into wrestling history from Vice's wildly popular show. Back to WWE now, and it's no secret that Paige has been through a lot of difficult times, but she was able to turn things around and had plenty to celebrate this week. On Instagram, the first ever NXT Women's Champion revealed that she's been sober for two years and praised her brother Roy in his own journey as he's been clean for six weeks. Paige has found a way to keep active in the wrestling world despite her retirement in 2018, and whilst her brother Roy's journey to a better life is just starting, he has a very inspiring story to look towards in his younger sister. From one former women's champion to another as Sasha Banks was a fan of WWE prior to becoming a superstar, and while she, like many fans, once tried to grab an empty seat to be closer to the action, that led to a very awkward situation. During New Day's Feel the Power podcast, Banks revealed that she once took the seats of Kofi Kingston's family, leading to the former WWE champion's own mother to get mad at the future boss. Though Banks said she was scared on the podcast, Kofi couldn't hide his belly laugh, and although everything worked out in the end, it just goes to show you should probably stick to the seats on your ticket stub. And we're ending today with news from good old JR Jim Ross, as before he was calling action in AEW, he spent decades in WWE, though not all of them were happy years. During a recent episode of Grill and JR, the Hall of Famer brought up his October 2005 firing from the company, which went down in the worst possible way. Fired on screen and later in real life, Ross spoke about how Triple H didn't stand up for him backstage, especially after Ross fought hard to get the King of Kings a million dollar downside guarantee. He said, I was disappointed in that a bit because I always went to bat for him. I think he just took Vince's lead. Arguably the greatest commentator in the history of professional wrestling, JR seems to be in a much happier place over in AEW, and whilst Triple H's power in WWE has only grown over the past 15 years, and you can never say never in wrestling, it's doubtful that the game will ever be in a position of authority over JR again.